Hey, what's up? Leron here. Thank you for joining me. In today's painting tutorial, we'll paint these geese. There's actually a lot to be learned from this one, a lot of pretty deep insights that I think you'll enjoy. So without further ado, let's get to it. So let's get started now. To make things uh, a little more lively, perhaps, I decided to narrate this one real time, so I will talk as I'm painting this one. Uh, just to give you a, a better kind of understanding as to what I'm thinking about, what I'm considering, kind of like the live stream sessions, only the difference is there's not going to be a lot of the talk and conversational fluff some people consider. Uh, so hopefully that'll be good for that. So I'm going to start with the drawing. Now, I know a lot of people are scared of this stage, a lot of people just don't have the experience drawing, that's fine. What I want you to do is focus on the large shapes. So let me show you just how simple this can get. I'm actually just going to put these geese in the places, very generally speaking. So when you look at the scene, what do we have here? We have the top kind of third that is pretty much exposed. The other two thirds is where the geese are. Um, and we want to leave a bit of a gap uh, under them. So let's say the uh, goose that's closest to us is going to be somewhere around here. And then the uppermost area is going to be here. And that way we get this kind of a tunnel seeing the distance uh, behind them. And by the way, you'll have to forgive any ambulance noises, stuff like that. I'm recording with my camera directly, so the audio quality uh, plus some interruptions are, interruptions are due. Um, so we have the general area of the geese. Now, uh, I obviously don't want them to get all the way to the edge, so we don't want that to be cut. We also don't want on the left hand side the same thing from happening. So we have this box in which we'll place all of them. And that's what I mean when I talk about a work process that's from large to small. I know you can barely see, but look at the concept here. We started with something large that we know where to place and then we'll start splitting it up. So the goose that's closest to us is kind of off center to the right, very gently. So if this is the center, uh, maybe it's placed somewhere around here, maybe taking up about this distance from top to bottom to our box that we just created, okay? So let's, let's test this out. There's the body, just a, an oval, and there's the neck, okay? And the, because I'm doing this so loosely, I can really um, change, make a lot of changes without committing to anything too much, and that's the plus of this way of working. Now the other one is behind it. Now we'll move it a bit to the right just to make it a little more interesting, um, as it actually is in the reference photo. So that's the body. And there we have the neck. Now the neck here goes a little more to the right, while this one is kind of going forward, okay? So just one thing to have in mind, something like that. The shapes aren't accurate, that's fine. Now we have another one kind of up diagonally from this one, reaching all the way to the edge of this box we just put. So there's the body, kind of an oval, and there's the neck. So that's another one. And finally, we have another one here. And look, you don't need to know how to draw. You see, this is so straightforward. You really don't. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I will put uh, timestamps so you can actually go over the bar and see where the drawing stage ends, if that bores you. But I do want to give you a full picture of what I'm doing. So here uh, is the last one. And look at this. It's kind of the same line as this point. So kind of like this. So here's the edge of that oval shaped body like that, and here is the head. And we got an interesting composition that works, I think, really nicely. Under that, another big element we'll have is the reflection, obviously, so let's just put something there. So that's one, that's two with the head, really coming towards the, the bottom. Uh, here's another one for the body and then for the neck and the head. And we have all of these beautiful ripples, and believe it or not, you can actually paint based on that. It won't be accurate, it won't look necessarily good um, uh, in terms of the shapes, but it will actually, if you take, I'll challenge you. I'll challenge you to, and I'll challenge myself for a future video, maybe I'll do another one, to paint it based on that with these very basic shapes. As long as you get the values right and you get an interesting color temperature, it'll actually work very nicely as an abstract piece, okay? But today we're not painting abstract, so what I'm gonna do is start detailing it out, adding details to each and every one of them so that we'll have something to paint, 
paint based upon. So it's funny, I took a quick break just to take care of something and when I came back and I look at this, it just goes to show you what fresh eyes can provide because now it looks much more on point to me. Like a lot of the things that I doubted earlier perhaps now look really good. So let's start establishing the shapes here. So this obviously isn't an actual oval, it's a bit squished down the bottom because of the basically uh, goose touching the water surface. Okay, so we get something like this. And look at the shapes, and, and animals are very forgiving, so if you don't get everything accurate, that's fine. There's this tail here that's aiming kind of towards us, and from here we go sharply up, connect to this part of the body, we got the wings here, flappy flap, some feathers, and again, this could be actually shorter. I'm not gonna beat myself uh, too bad about this one, I'm not aiming for necessarily a high degree of realism when it comes to the drawing stage. I will be more concerned about it uh, in later stages. The neck may be a little too long. Let's stop it somewhere around here. Now there's something really cool happening here um, where its beak is going f forward away from us. So we just see a sliver of it. Now let's compare the distances. So this is kind of the same. It's close enough. It's way more than enough for me. Now let's just fix this line here just to make sure that I know where to paint so something like this where the tip is here okay now there's the, uh, sh the uh, not shadow the reflection now the beautiful thing about these reflections is that are highly abstracted so you just really draw it as you see it and I actually have a tutorial planned for you on that uh, in which I'll show you how by drawing things as you see them that's actually all you need to create a realistic impression, hopefully it will blow your mind. Uh, because it is it is a fun thing to do and it's kind of like you just paint it as you see it, as cleanly as possible and voila, at the end it looks realistic. So that's a really cool thing I wanna try out. So we have one, one out of four. Uh, let's go over the rest fairly quickly here. Wing, another wing, the tail, aiming to the side. We can see a little of the back, a little bit of the goose butt. <laughs> And it goes like this, goes like that. Straight line, fairly straight because it moves away from us. Uh, and it's again, the, the, the surface, it's touching the water surface. And then we got the beak. I'm drawing fairly uh, stronger lines than I normally would because I really want you to be able to see this state. Um, otherwise I would have uh, worked much lighter, but that's fine. Uh, I'll deal with it as the teacher. There are some things I need to deal with uh, that you don't, and that's fine. That's the eye. And now if you're having a like a mess in your mind, you just clean this up a bit, like that. Here we go, and then you get a bit of a better uh, view of what it looks like. Same here, you can clean up a lot of these excess lines, you don't need them. And look at how it really starts taking shape here. That's a really neat kind of a thing. So here we go. The head, you can see the head separate to the reflection of the body, which is really cool. Wavy lines here, by the way, there may be an interruption, so you'll have to forgive me if I have to pause recording. I actually found someone's wallet in the park and uh, they need to pick it up. Um, so here we go. Facebook just makes these things so much easier. I found a dude in a moment, in, a, in an instant. Um, so here we go, like that. I'm gonna clean up some of these lines again. Again, a bit rough lines, but that's fine. Now the other guy around. Uh, like so. And here you can really make use of what we already have. So you see the wing reaches the, the uh, neck here, so you know you were accurate. If not, then you know play around with it a bit or, or change it up. Again, animals are very forgiving when it comes to that. And by the way, yes, this is gonna be a bit of a longer uh, tutorial, so if you want accuracy, sometimes that'll have to be the case because I'm really uh, taking my time with it. The painting stage is gonna be much faster, as, as you may know, very often painting is a little faster. Now, when I look at it, I see that I made a big mistake here and it's important compositionally. This goose isn't looking to the right, it's actually looking a bit inward. So there's gonna be some foreshortening. So the head's gonna be squeezed a little shorter and the beak is gonna be squeezed a little shorter, like that and the eye is gonna be close to the edge. So now you see it looks a little forward, whereas this one really looks more to the side, so you get to see more of the beak. Um, I hope that makes sense. 
So we have another one, eyes a little more to the left, and here it's a little closer to the beak. Um, I would actually make the beak even shorter than that to really show that uh, it's looking away. So something like this, and the last one, and then uh, I'll give you a zoomed in view of everything. Uh, and if you'll skip the drawing stage, it'll probably bring you somewhere around here uh, in the video. Uh, when I give you the view of, uh, of everything here. And I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and it, it really means a lot knowing that my stuff helps people. Uh, and I would really appreciate if you drop a like on the video. It just helps me reach more people. Uh, I'm very grateful for that. The channel is growing really fast and uh, I really appreciate all your support. So thank you for that. So if you can drop a like, that'll be great. Uh, lets me know that the video is good and you want more uh, and it also helps it reach more people if you aren't subscribed make sure you're subscribed uh, so I think we're done now this one's a little <laughs> this is too tall so let's go here it starts somewhere around here actually close it off and what we'll have is the wing here and this entire section really is unnecessary so like this and um, here we go like that uh, and we're pretty much done now a couple of things we do need to take care of uh, light and shadow let me show you this up close just so you know what you're uh, what you're seeing because it's a bit from far here had to zoom in a bit I'm, I'm actually filming in the living room because I wanted to make sure there's good light and I'm starting to miss that good hour of the day uh, so now there are these ripples that you want to make sure you capture so here's um, a couple of the more prominent ones. This is kind of like perspective where I'll drop a few guidelines. I'm not gonna draw, of course, each and every ripple, but just knowing their pattern can help me later on uh, get some of these in, okay? Very often when uh, painting or drawing nature, look at the patterns. It really helps to place things in right um, and try to avoid too much of a pattern, of course. Don't have things repeat the same way. That's a big no-no and the ripples get uh, More blurry and smaller the farther they go. Okay, so here it is And now uh, we can actually I think just put in the light and shadow and we're ready to go So uh, let me clean this up a bit. I wonder what I should clean up. I mean, there's so much going on here there's so many lines that are unnecessary, but let's we can work with that. So one of the main things I want to do is make sure to leave a sliver of a highlight around the geese, because uh, if you see the light comes from the front, which is why we get these beautiful, uh, strong reflections. And you can see that here along the neck. You see there's this sliver of a highlight. Um, there is shadow from the neck itself cast onto the feathers like that so for all the ambulances and the noise we'll have to deal with it for now and uh, this highlight goes around goes back in goes like this the more you get these accurately the better it's gonna look later on okay so uh, try to get them as accurate as you can because the the impression can be can look good and can look realistic in many different ways actually the only thing is the more you steer away from the reference photo the more likely you are to mess it up change things around it shouldn't uh, be changed so if you try and be at least close very often that's enough and texture here is a, is a big part uh, of this painting and one thing you'll notice is uh, I'm not drawing each and every feather or the texture itself directly what I'm doing and the way this works for me is I focus on uh, <clears throat> the edges so when you look at the edges here this is what will hint at the shapes uh, in the texture itself uh, maybe later on there will be some room for <clears throat> adding actual texture, but for now it's unnecessary really. And the thing I'm doing now is I'm just establishing some light and shadow. Honestly, I never just paint looking at the at the, the sketch. I'll have to refer to the reference photo while I'm doing that. And I don't know, I, I always say it, but I never know if it's clear enough. I always refer back to the reference photo. I'll look at the what I have here, then the reference, and I'll think to myself, okay, what does this shape look like? While I'm painting, while you're working fast, while you're having a hard time maybe rendering the shapes and everything, um, you always have to have that in mind. So let's talk strategy before we get to actually painting this nine minutes in. It's gonna be, again, a bit of a longer video, but the painting process is gonna be faster. Strategy. What I need to do here is do two things. Paint the geese and their shadows, preferably connected together. 
um, or reflections rather, and the background, okay? Now we have two ways of kind of going about this. One way would be to actually start with the geese uh, and then put in the, the background. What I love about this is that it lets you focus on a smaller area and really devote a lot of attention to it and there's less pressure than this big wash. The problem with that is I do want to connect them to their shadow. And if I want to do that, I need to already have the background wash. Does that make sense? Why do I say this? Because if I now put in their uh, shadow or reflection, I'll have to glaze over it with the background and I'm running the risk of reawakening the paint and making it move. I don't want that. So the logical step is to actually start with the background, have it just treat the gradation of water from light to dark and maybe a couple of stray ripples uh, wet and wet, but really ultimately uh, getting this wash done and disregarding the shadows and reflections and then putting in the geese and connecting them completely with the shadows and reflections. So I think we'll do this. We'll start with the background, even though I would have preferred honestly to start with the geese. I just don't want to smear the already existing paint. Now you could do a third thing and I'm really going into detail here. You could start with the geese and not paint their shadow at all, stop here, do the same for all of them and stop here, then put in the background wash and maybe do some of it wet and wet or just let it dry and then add the reflections. The only problem is I want the reflections and the geese to connect. It's so beautiful when they connect and it feels good, it feels really uh, anchored to the, uh, to the water surface. Okay, so that's one thing that I do want to preserve, which is why I'll probably go with the route that, not necessarily my favorite, we'll start with the background, uh, paint around these very carefully, make sure we mix enough water, it's wet enough, uh, and then we'll uh, continue with the details on the geese themselves. So we've talked about the strategy, um, painting the background. Now, what's beautiful about these kinds of scenes is that nothing is, like no color is too strong. You don't really get a pure blue or even a pure, uh, yellow for that matter, matter, maybe around these feathers. Uh, so what I'm doing is trying to mix uh, kind of a gray for the water as best as I can using a bunch of uh, blue, uh, red, yellow. Uh, I'm using yellow ochre. This blue is actually, and I don't think, I don't know if that's part of the paint or just dirt, uh, but this blue is actually the Mayan blue genuine, Daniel Smith. So not my usual one, but I don't know, lately I enjoyed using it a bit. Uh, and this kind of a quinacridone rose. This is obviously uh, green, so we're gonna add a bit more uh, of the red to it, and we'll see where it takes us. Now we can actually use this uh, other red I have here a bit better by White Knights. Again, don't get too caught up in the colors, but look at my process here. I'm really mixing until I feel like I got the right um, value, but also temperature, generally speaking. I am trying to aim for uh, a similar temperature. So let's put this in. So this is way too green, obviously. So let's get more blue. Let's get more uh, of the red, just to neutralize some of that green. Um, get more water in and go over that. Now this is too dark, okay? So I'm gonna come back with water and just help it move, you see? And that's how you slowly, just like you, I have no, again, assurance that what I'm doing will look good. I, I can't really know that in advance. What I'm doing is starting the process. Again, water's, watercolor is kind of like a roller coaster. You get started uh, and wherever you end up, that's where you end up. Um, I will say a few things. Keeping a minimal palette is very useful for uh, making sure you don't go uh, too crazy with the colors or maybe uh, create something that is too garish in a way um, or something like that. Uh, color is very subjective, so don't feel bad if, if you know you get some crazy wacky combinations um, You may like something that I don't and vice versa, of course um, So don't worry about that Sometimes I have to kind of stay quiet and really focus because there are a lot of complex shapes here Now the more I go down, I will make it a little cooler uh, Maybe a little more green and blue together, okay? Um, that's what it feels like, at least to me. The warmest water is actually in the distance here. Um, maybe it's because of the way the light and shadow work in this scene, you know. Not always will you go from blue in the distance and then warmth in the... Uh, or, you know, or yellow uh, up close. Sometimes it's actually reversed, okay? So you want to be prepared for these instances as well. Uh, and I'm trying to get an even wash as much as I can. I'm going to use some of my... Uh, 
water sprayer here and I did promise I'll show you a lot of the sheen so let's go let me show you what I've got at the moment at the risk of this bleeding back into itself that's fine um, here we go uh, you will actually be surprised at just how insignificant this wash is in the grand scheme of things okay let me switch to a smaller brush I'm struggling here uh, you will be surprised at how insignificant this wash can be uh, what matters more is the overall placement of the element, overall um, way of, of putting in the values and all of that. Um, what I am very uh, aware of is when is this section dry enough for me to do some wet and wet and maybe get a few ripples in, okay? For that I need to work a little fast here. So I'm trying to work around the shapes of the geese. That's not an easy uh, stage for sure. Do your best. Simplify their shape if you're really struggling and you know work more like the with the, the circles. I showed you earlier uh, That will help and now we'll get more paint. So more of there's a this weird fly here that bugs me More of this kind of a bit more greenish, but maybe that's too much put a bit of red in it um, These colors are very um, Very easily picked up. It's white knights for the most part some Daniel Smith it's very easy to pick them up and uh, that's a good thing but it can also be a bit of a bad thing when it comes to uh, mixing they're very dominant pretty much all of them uh, but in any case again don't worry about this wash too much it's gonna be uh, much more significant later on what we'll do with the painting so I'm gonna wrap this one up Fast. Let's add a bit more blue to this. The Mayan blue is really soft, so it's it's a bit of a wacky one. I'm learning to use it now as we speak. Uh, not an easy one to use. What you want to do now is look at the values and make sure that they kind of make sense overall. Remember, this is going to dry much uh, lighter. So just kind of uh, see if you can foresee how uh, dry it's going to be how light it's going to be when it's dry. Now I'm going to spray a bit of water and then I'll put in some ripples for the background. These do need to be a little blue. Now I don't really know what I'll get so we'll give it a try. Okay, I think that'll work. Maybe a bit of a thicker mix but just a bit. And this is really the sweet spot because now the wash is um, it's starting to dry. It's definitely not fl as flowy as before but it still maintains its shape. And that's the key here. You want this to maintain its shape, okay? I'm actually gonna spray a bit over the stronger ones just to make sure they don't stay as strong. We have a pretty major ripple here. Let me get some thicker paint. See this one right here? Pretty major. I know it may look a little too strong now. And by the way, I forgot to fill in the section. So let's fix that. That can happen too. Uh, like this there's a hair coming off this brush that may drive me crazy ultimately uh, but here we go putting in those few ripples that are left that are significant enough for me to put um, and the wetter the the wash on paper is the thicker the paint you need to use if you want the paint to stay where it's at okay uh, I don't think I'll put all of the ripples now for sure uh, but I will put some of them as you can see here some of them may be more prominent ones we can basically stop this wash at any second and just say okay we'll let it dry it's just the more you do now maybe it'll make your life easier later on okay that's the one thing you'll uh, have in mind for this one now look at how soft the ripples are I'm still learning wet and wet to be honest with you I'm still learning how to maybe main, maintain that softness and really uh, get it to continue working. Um, and we're pretty much done. Uh, the bottom part is really green because I didn't mix it properly. I should have uh, given it a bit more time, uh, but that's fine. It will still work and sorry, I moved it. Uh, let me show you a look up close. I think we'll now, um, I think we'll let it dry. Maybe should have gone even darker in some spots, uh, but we'll see. We'll, we'll, you know what? Let's, let's push it to be a little darker down below. I think it should be. So I'm just gonna spray a bit. Um, these things are really tricky. And uh, sometimes it's really not easy to get the right uh, mix. Sorry if I'm touching the camera. 
this is really so different from like using a French ultramarine that is very gentle in a way. This red and the, the blue and all of them are pretty strong right out the gate. Um, let's see how wet this is. So when I look at this and I look at the sheen, there is barely any, so I do need to use thick paint. Let's just give it a touch. So I think it's a little too late for anything significant. So let's darken it by adding a few stray ripples maybe. They will blend a bit, ultimately. Uh, but we'll hope that we can pull it off later on. Okay, so I'm just going with the, some of the patterns I observed earlier. See? Uh, and putting on these shapes. Hopefully some of them will stay. Others may not, that's fine. It's just too late to actually darken the entirety of the bottom, so I don't want to do that for now. So I'm just going to touch it here and there. And then we'll let it dry and come back and uh, add some of the more significant shapes. I know it looks <laughs> really strong. It will dry uh, much, much weaker, even in the places that look strong, so don't worry about it. Okay, so I was about to say that uh, I think we may need to do another wash for the background and gradually go a little darker. But believe it or not, the value is actually pretty close. I <laughs> compared uh, the two, uh, my painting and the reference photo in black and white. It's actually not that far off. Uh, so we're good in that uh, regard. What I want to do next is start working on the geese themselves. Um, and the way to do this really is I'm just going to do the same method I always do of putting in a, a, a continuous wash starting with the value and temperature I want and really painting them a la prima while skipping the highlights, okay? And this is a technique um, I really suggest you practice and, and learn to improve at uh, because it's just super useful. I, I find myself using it all the time. Now, I do need to rearrange some stuff. It's not too ergonomic, ergonomic the way I work right now. Here we go. Um, so if you look at the, this geese, for example, this goose, for example, uh, the head is a little darker and then it gradually gets a little lighter but also uh, a little warmer. So I'm going to start with this kind of a blue here, a um, bit green, let's add a bit of uh, red here. Just to neutralize some of that and add a bit of blue, add a bit of water. I really want to show you this process. This paint picks up too easily. Which is a problem. Uh, I think it's also because it dried a bit in the uh, tube. Uh, but in any case, I'm gonna put in the color and we'll see if it looks a little too dark or maybe it's on point, I don't know. We'll just put it here to begin and I'm gonna leave those highlights up top and to the sides. Sorry about the drilling, that may be extremely annoying. There's a lot of construction works at the moment here. Uh, so sorry about that if you can hear it too much. Uh, now I do need a bit cleaner blue, so just to cool it up a bit, uh, like this. Now as I move downwards, I'm going to start warming it up a bit, okay, with some uh, yellows and maybe also just by lightening it uh, in terms of value, like this. And I know it may seem a little too strong even, but um, you really have to remember that it's going to dry lighter and Sometimes it's very tricky when you have this background and then an object in front of it. Uh, I'm going to keep it a little lighter on the left side here and a little cooler and slightly darker here on the right. And you see these transitions in, in uh, temperature uh, and value are what's responsible for uh, producing a, an interesting result. Now, as we move on to the shadow here cast by the neck, I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush and I want to show you it goes much cooler. So let me do that. Let me grab just a bit of blue here. Just a bit of the blue. Clean. And we'll cast a blue shadow. See? Like that. So because so far we really worked on a lot of fairly muted areas, we can now afford it to go a little uh, more saturated. That will really bring the geese into focus, okay? So this is blue. Um, painting around the feathers with a bit of blue. But you'll notice around some spots there are actually dots of warmth. So I'm gonna take a bit of yellow straight out of the tube and just put it in, you see? And it's these beautiful and unique transitions that keep it interesting in a way. OK, 
Okay, this is way too much blue. I really need to learn how to work with this color. It's a big mess. Uh, now you may say my palette is uh, a mess too. Uh, I actually wanted to have uh, a bit of an organic feeling here as well. Usually with paintings that are um, a bit more uh, muted and subtle in, in terms of the colors, uh, I like to keep my palette a little messier because that helps all the colors mix together and that's really what I'm aiming for here um, to create a nice organic feeling. Okay, now as we get to the middle, it's actually a little bit of uh, warmth here and fairly dark. Can actually pick up a bit of that kind of a black color here and just darken some sections up. And we can do some wet and wet here while it may be just a little bit uh, wet. And just start building up the shape slowly. Okay, again, I don't know exactly. Um, what this will turn out like but I do know uh, that I'm following the pattern of light and shadow that I established earlier okay and I do know one more thing I do know that I'm gonna connect it to the reflection that's a really important step okay so now we're gonna go a bit lighter in yellow on this side because it's more exposed to the light here and there's a bit of a highlight popping through and as we get to the bottom this is again a really important part we're going to start connecting it uh, with the reflection. So the reflection is going to be a little green. Uh, it's also fairly dark, so I'm going to add a bit of red to it, darken it up. Uh, let's see what it looks like on paper. This is colors I'm using here, so I wasn't planning correctly probably. Should have used a bit less opaque paints, but that's fine. We'll work with what we've got. I'm never too big on color anyway. So I'm going to start creating those shapes of shadows and reflections. Uh, kind of creating a random pattern under the uh, goose. I do want to darken this spot annoys me a bit. Let's darken it up here and here and here as well around the base. Uh, the paint's a little patchy here. That's probably a combination of me not working fast enough, but also the paint. This uh, Mayan, Mayan blue, I should have probably mixed it with a toothpick before opening up the pen but again I want to show you all of these are just it's just um, these um, obstacles on the way are really irrelevant you can still produce something beautiful if you just follow your process and really put your heart into it and get the values to be somewhat accurate in the ballpark and get your shapes to be as accurate as you can I know not everyone knows how to draw accurately that's fine see these random three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional um, I don't know if they're three-dimensional, but kind of abstract patterns. All of these are really important. The one thing I may I fear is that this is going to dry way too light. So let's add a bit. I can actually add a bit of green here too to the red and kind of neutralize it. Let's go darker here just to make sure we don't need to go over it later on because that's going to be a disaster. I want this to look good right out the gate, the first attempt. Uh, here, here we go. And look at there's there are a couple of reflections that are separate. And these are really key because they hint at the direction of the water. Okay, so these kind of separate, see those? And from afar, hopefully a good impression is created and it actually looks like the animal itself. Uh, we can also connect it to some uh, ripples that you see here next to it. And then you may have to uh, blend some edges because the ripples aren't sharp edged on both sides mostly just on one so something like this but I don't want to overwork the background for now uh, we'll keep it fairly simple and move on to the next uh, goose okay um, so we'll, we're gonna see a similar pattern now I will start with a bit of that I don't know a bit of orange muted orange here um, let me show you just for the beak uh, we can do the same for this beak, by the way, which I forgot to put in. <laughs> so this beak here, this is too dark, you can't see it. I need it to be lighter so that you'll actually be able to see it. Something like this. There we go. Ideally, I'd like it to be even more saturated. So let's put some pure, uh, pure red into it. I want you to see some color here, see? 
This looks much better. I don't know how much this shows in the camera, but uh, hopefully it does. And now back to a bit of blue here. But just a bit, this is still quite neutralized, to be honest. Uh, so here we go. And look at how I'm connecting everything together, you see? I'm never really pausing. Now I've lost some of the highlight there, that's fine. We'll bring it back later on. And as I move down, I'm gonna switch to a bit of a lighter yellow, okay? Or maybe a bit of orange, I don't know, something like this. That will really show the light shining through, okay? So here we go, like that. Um, really try not to overwork it like I did with the first one here. I overworked it just a bit too much. Some of the yellow, maybe stronger saturated yellows here. And then there's quite a lot of bouncy light. I love that because their feathers are white, you get all of the lights from the surrounding basically show on them, which is a really interesting phenomenon. Uh, so a lot of light is reflected by them and by the feathers and it's just really cool. Uh, and then as I move down, I'm gonna use this more neutral blue mix I have here. Like that. I'm not following what I see to the T. I'm making my own uh, version of it in a way. So here we go. The right side is a lot more nuanced. So I'm gonna get a bit of this kind of neutralized yellow. Put this in here. Leave the gap. I didn't even draw, draw this part. But that's fine. Leave this gap here and then have some of the light at the bottom with some sharp nice patterns like that pick up some of the excess paint and I will pick up the pace for some of the rest here um, let's get this beautiful kind of dark orange and again some of these highlights can be brought back by simply um, Let's use a bit of this blue too. Uh, by simply using an opaque paint later on. That's always an option, so don't worry too much if you missed some of them. Uh, and very often you'll find that you messed up some parts, but others work really well. If I have a spot that I think works really well, that's more than I need to be happy with a painting. Uh, and always try and look for something in your work that you do like and appreciate and are grateful for. It's not always easy, uh, but for the most part, for me, I'm really able to find something that works. It could be just one, uh, one of the geese, it could be the water even. Not in this instance, I actually like the geese better than the water, <laughs> to be honest. Um, let's remove a bit of this light here. Uh, but yeah, always try and find something like that. Now let's get a bit of clean blue here. And I'm exaggerating a bit. It's not as clean as I'm doing it here. I'm exaggerating just to create some interest in the colors. Because if you really look at the, um, the painting as a whole, this is pretty much the only area where I can do that. Uh, the rest is way too subtle to play around with. Notice there's a bit of a yellow there where the light kind of hits the blue areas. That's gonna really be a nice little effect later on. I'm gonna add a bit of red to that. Feels a little too strong of a blue. A bit here. You see, if even just one looks kind of right, uh, you've done your job. The most fun part to me is undoubtedly the reflection underneath, just because it's so much easier, it's looser, it's a little more impressionistic. It's just fun. Let's add a bit of this darker value here. And then finish up with a bit of this neutral blue. And start working on the reflection, which is gonna be this kind of a, you know, gray, green. <laughs> so I'm just using my red and green for this one. I don't know why, it's just, I have a few greens here that may work, like that. And I really try and look at the shape here. There's a gap of light here. 
that I want to preserve. And sometimes you'll be surprised at the things that do work as opposed to the things that don't work. Like you'd think that you messed up something and then it ends up looking really good. And another aspect that you thought would be good kind of messed up. That's just a part of it. Um, I like to always tell people, focus on painting. Just focus on the action of painting. As long as you paint, you'll improve. Uh, one more thing that I kind of forgot is to take care of some of the edges here. These aren't all sharp edges, and it's a shame that I just now notice. I was focused so much on the shape that some of these really are a bit more subtle of an edge, so I'm just gonna wet a bit, lift. It's actually gonna create a major difference in the feeling. You see, it just makes the g goose, I keep forgetting, uh, rounder. And this Mayan blue is a lot of trouble. The reason I'm getting these streaks is actually because of that, so um, I guess I learned my lesson. Either really mix well uh, the paint when it comes out of the tube for a while. You see, very often people ask me about that kind of a, you know, and now I'm reaching for just random colors, but people ask me about the streaks in their paintings, and one thing I haven't even thought of is, yeah, it could be due to the paint sitting too long in the and the palette. Uh, you never really know. Um, so have that in mind. It could be it. You see, even though I'm using a lot of water, um, it still comes out a little, you know, a little streaky, a little too streaky for uh, my taste. Um, in any case, the last one, but I do, before we move on to that, I just want to blend some of uh, the, these edges here, especially this one. And this one here. And then I'll actually grab a tissue that I have here. And we'll do this kind of a... There we go, just a little bit. Um, and we can do some either wet and wet or just darkening some spots here where the feathers are, just to tell a better story. Um, like this. See, it makes it a little rounder, less flat, because it is an important part of the goose. Um, same goes for this one. We can actually add these in here. And with that, we can move on uh, to the last one. Same, same thing, same method, top to bottom. A bit of red for the beak. Um, and then after we finish with this wash, our job is to look at the entire thing uh, and ask ourselves if it works or if we would uh, like to add something. And, and almost always you'll have to add something. I mean, maybe a bit of uh, details on their faces. That's a very common thing. Um, maybe a bit of uh, color here and there. Who knows? Uh, this goes a little warmer on the neck. Because again, it's thinner, so more reflected light seems to be present. So this goes like that. Tried keeping the shapes of the highlights uh, kind of straight, but I did a terrible job at that, to be honest with you. I don't know why. Um, I'll bring some of them back with opaque paint. I just have no, no uh, other choice, because I really messed some of these up. Um, and for the body, let's use a bit of this kind of a neutral blue. And you can decide not to render each and every part immediately. What you can do, let me show you, is just go over everything like that and then start with the nuances, okay? So don't feel like you have to really work section by section. It could actually look even better if you go at it this way. Um, a bit of warmth near the edges here. Uh, this time I won't forget to blend some of them too. The warmth here, warmth there. Let's blend. So, there we go, like this like that and as for the feathers it's just an illusion so if you just put a few lines in it will uh, read well let's get a bit of a darker thing in here get some of the nuances of the feathers this one dries very fast this paint i do feel like a lot of it is due to the um mayan blue it's just it's weird it works a little different than i'm used to should have probably practiced it a bit more but in any case no reason to 
worry about it now. Let's get this one last reflection. Get it as flowy as you can. Uh, and I think we'll then let it dry and give it some time. And give myself some time to see it clearly after a short break. Figure out what there is to change. I actually don't mind the reflection having a bit of red in it. I'm all for unique colors, you know. And I'll connect some of these ripples with some external ones, you see. Um, and then there's the neck here. And look at how it gets separate. That's the, the key part here. At some point the ripples go separate. Even for the neck and stuff like that. So have that in mind. And let's give it some time to dry. Kind of like the way it looks. Very, I don't know, very rough impression in a way. Uh, but I like it. Let's let it dry and then continue. Surprise! I wanted to show you it from afar, uh, and, and if you took a break with me, which I'm sure you haven't, because why would you? Um, hopefully you see this in a bit of fresher, with a fresher set of eyes, or a bit cleaner. But let's zoom in, I want to talk about the plan. So we're actually almost done. I did, in th second thought, uh, decide to darken the background, but just a bit. Let me show you, oops. It's really important that you don't go overboard here. What I want to do is cover it with a thin glaze of just blue, okay, clean blue, uh, all the way down, but keeping it very, very clean and not too dark, okay, that's the main part here. It just feels a little darker in the reference photo and it will make the highlights pop a little more. Not that they need to pop a lot, I do feel like it's needed for the balance in this particular one. So I'll start by mixing um, as light of a blue as I can, but still keeping it fairly blue and I can actually use, I can make use of a lot of uh, different wells here. Now I'm not too worried about having this blue a little more towards the blue and not necessarily gray because it's glazed on top of a gray but it's still, come on, like look at my palette, it's still gonna be quite gray so that's fine. Uh, now with these large washes whenever you think you mix enough paint you have it. Okay, that's just reality, you need a lot. So I'm continuing to mix more and more and more. And I think we're getting close to the right amount we need. The only reason this is close, by the way, is because we need it to be so light. So let's go over everything here with this very watery wash. It's very watery, okay? Don't, don't worry about it looking as though it's maybe too dark. It's not. It's gonna dry much, much lighter, okay? And we'll just cover everything up. And when you're doing this, it's like a very gentle operation. You really have to make sure you don't scrub the paper. You just go at it one go on wherever you need to. And that's it. Because if you paint the same spot a couple of times, you're running the risk of reawakening the paint and then it's just a big mess. Nobody, want, nobody wants that. So just letting you know. Now it is important to avoid the highlights because that's the whole purpose of doing this, to uh, put them in the right context. So I will try and work around them as much as I can here. Um, and other than that, the next stage afterwards will just be to polish some of them because the highlights are in a bit of a mess at the moment, okay? Um, they're a bit wonky. It's kind of my fault, should have been a little more careful with the negative painting. And not only the negative painting, also painting inside the geese, that was a big part of it. Um, so yeah, um, let's flip it upside down. Or before we do that, let me just dry it with a hair dryer and come back. Okay, so the only things that are really left now are just the details and highlights, so we'll get those done uh, fairly easily, I think. Um, we just need to put in the eyes and some details on the beaks uh, and anything else we really notice. I actually believe I won't do too much when it comes to um, the background and ripples. I think I'm happy with uh, what it looks like now. Added a bit of a where the mouth opens, the eye has a bit of uh, a few spots, which is nice. Why not get that in? Um, bit of a stronger shadow here between the feathers, um, bit of the shape of the feathers, stuff like that you may want to put in. You can use the side of the brush, maybe 
move it around even with your finger just to get it to flow a bit. This is unnecessary, no highlights here, light cannot reach here. Um, and what else? There's another section of the highlight that I completely ignored, of the reflections that I completely ignored, so there it goes. We have some of the um, reflection under this fella that should be showing. Um, a few dry brush marks here and there for texture. That's another way of putting texture, but very, I'm doing it very gently. I'm trying not to, you know, not to do it too much and also uh, really pay attention to where I put it. Uh, beak done, done, done. Most of this is really done. Maybe a bit of a shadow here in between the neck and the rest of the body, like that. Just a bit. And to be honest, we're done. Now let's get our opaque paint. But actually before that, one more thing. I wanna patch up the shapes regardless of opaque paint. So you see this is way too thick and actually there is no real highlight there. So let's get rid of that. Let's straighten up some of these lines. It was just a little lazy or careless with them. Let's straighten out this line here. Should be a thinner strip of highlight. And then it actually moves a little down yet again, all the way to the edge here. Um, let's see here. This is good, actually. I like that. Maybe here a bit. For sure here. We'll have to straighten it out and use some more opaque paint. There are no highlights here. There's barely any strong highlight here. Same for this. Let's get rid of some of those. Uh, under here, light cannot reach, like that, like that, um, going quiet because I'm thinking, <laughs> let's get a bit more darkness, I uh, wanted to put it here, that's right, like that. And I think we're pretty close. Now we can get the opaque paint. This is really cool. Every time I just walk away from the painting for a few seconds and come back, uh, it actually looks better and better. So quite happy about that. So I'm just going to grab a bit of uh, this opaque paint here. And should I show you up close? Let's, let me show you up close just so that you can maybe enjoy some painting action. Here is the top of the head that really needs it the most. This is almost kind of like acrylics uh, or oils, like this. Um, we'll need to get some more. And just spread it out where it's needed, like here, on top of the head of this guy, on top of the beak. Uh, here to the left, just making it a little clearer, making it a little clearer here. Um, this is good front of the face here as well like that uh, there is a bit of it here actually even in the water like this you can't couldn't see sorry about that just put it a bit here um, here as well make it a little stronger this should be lighter and this is pretty much it, I think. Um, we're done. I could add some more ripples to the water, as I mentioned. I just don't really see the need to. Uh, so I think we'll keep it as is. I just want to let it dry for a few more seconds and then we'll remove the tape because, again, if you just remove it now, it may still stay buckled. But give it some time under a uh, hairdryer uh, and you will see how it flattens much better. Um, and I really like this one. I don't have a lot of animal paintings on my gallery. I'm going to put it there for sale. Uh, so let's just give it a few seconds and then remove the tape. So after letting it dry, there are actually two more things I want to do. Bear with me. I know I keep saying it's over and then there are a couple of things to do yet. Uh, one thing is to make a bit more of a separation between the neck uh, of this goose and the background. Uh, it just seems to be, to me at least, a little, um, little darker compared to the one at the back, very slightly. So, I'm just gonna do this kind of a thing. 
and maybe put a bit more darkness to it just a bit oopsie doopsie that's not good and here we go there are actually a lot of good lessons to to be learned from this uh, entire process that I'll talk about when wrapping up but here uh, the, the second thing I told you I wanted to do was to add some of those darkest ripples uh, so let's do that you can actually see some of my negative painting there it's my bad but you see some of these ripples are quite visible and they will have an impact on the final painting so why not put them in see this this is pretty major and this is why I always tell you to practice, you know, the brush control and all of that, because to get these beautiful swooping kind of motions, the only real way to improve at it is to practice this skill uh, in particular. Do you see how it just gives the water some sense of movement? This should be a little more horizontal, actually, so like that. Uh, there's a bit of a ripple here. And if you use dry brush, uh, you can actually get these more blurry uh, ripples. To still look good even if you're not doing them wet and wet um, and just a bunch of crisscrossy patterns here and you see it just gives the water a lot more movement and we're close to overdoing it so i will stop soon maybe just one more here and i think we're done there's good motion good movement we will remove the tape celebration time I will also post a high quality picture either later today or maybe I already posted it on Instagram so just be sure to check it out there. Let's do this. One, two, three and it's gonna be significant for this kind of work because again we filled it all the way to the sides to the edges with a wash. That's always the paintings that get the most boost out of removing the tape and this is it I really like this one I will show it to you from afar too as well so you'll see how the impressionism works um, and yeah some of the beaks here I love this kind of orange a big mess but from afar it makes sense and that goes to show you not only for the drawing stage you can mess up the details but overall if you nail it it will look good also for the painting stage again this is definitely not to the T at all compared to the reference photo, but because overall the, the geese are in the right place, the water, the planning was on point, the result is still uh, more than acceptable. I really like this one. So thank you so much. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So I promised I'll show you from afar and here we go. Uh, you can probably see how it's much, you can see the impressionism, it feels a lot more on point and that's fine that's how these works are sometimes meant to be viewed uh, me personally i really like this process and i think the main takeaway is what i just said last the idea of it's okay to mess up some of the smaller details some of the smaller washes some of the smaller shapes as long as you plan it carefully put things in the right places that's the most important part and that's actually something anyone can do with just a little experience okay um Animals, generally speaking, again, I mentioned this a few times, are very forgiving. Um, they're very, uh, you can make smaller mistakes. Maybe for faces like dogs and cats, you will notice them. But for geese and birds and all of that and fish, it's really a forgiving uh, painting subject. So why not check it out? I will put this one for sale on my gallery. I hope you'll check it out. I know some people have checked out the gallery. And thank you so much to anyone who purchased the painting. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, this is it. Take care. I hope to see you in another video. Don't forget to drop a like if you found this one helpful. Let me know what you think of the real-time narration as opposed to a later post-recorded narration. This saves me time in editing, but it takes more time on painting. But I'm more in the process. I hope that makes sense. And with that, I will see you in the next vid real soon.